checking websites for about 10 years, even when I was in my corporate life as an executive. I uh, kept two side hustles. One was um, designing websites, and the other one is um, I'm a musician in a band called Boy Chocolate for the last 20 years. <laughs> so 20 years coming up in um, 2020 for us. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. But what I would like to do, I have a very boring presentation for you. So <laughs> I am hoping that um, I can go, or, whoop, go around the room and see, <coughs> just kind of get an idea of who you are, your business, why you're here. So who wants to start? I'll go first with that. Got a bunch of coffee in me already. So love it. <laughs> um, worked as a salesman for 25 years, and I just got tired of being treated just like a salesperson. Unfortunately, oh, nice. um, one bad month, you know, you could have 15 great ones. All you do is focus on that. So I decided to get into my own business. So I leveraged the partnerships I developed in sales um, to provide services such as point of sale, credit merchant processing, uh, web design. Awesome. <laughs> Here I am, know nothing about it, but I can sell it. Um, so I now am in business for myself. I'm starting my third year. Um, I found you from SCORE. So I thought, well, why am I paying this guy to build my own website and everything else? Why not learn it myself? Yes. So here I am. Good for you. Well, let's make your business. Optimum Advisors. Okay. Do you have a business card? I do not. I've been partnered up with a friend who Where's I've been using his. He's got a ruler. I had business cards, but it's through one of my business partners, so I did not bring those today. But I'm, okay. So now I'm in the process of marketing my own self a little bit. He helped me get where I am at. Cool. So far, do you have a website? I'm building it right now. I actually just got my See domain posted. I just downloaded WordPress yesterday for the first time. Good so. job. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. So the first thing you've done. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, we got to go to YouTube to all the videos. Ah. Who wants to go next? Yes. We're not going to go around. Yep. Who's got who's got courage this morning? Second hand. Yeah. Second hand. All right. Let's go. Um, so I work in a local functional organization. Mm -hmm. And right now, Alicia. 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 Okay. And we're revamping our website. We're starting actually right from scratch. Um, our current website is off. And it's just very, very, very limited on what we can do with it. We can go through WordPress. So now we can do WordPress. Yes. Um, I have myself and my coworker with our IT department. And we're all putting our brains together on creating this new improved website. So yeah. right now we're taking the team and we're trying to narrow that down. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to give you a great foundation to kind of make some decisions moving right. forward because this is all the fundamental stuff that you should have. <laughs> it is a journey and it's so much fun. I'm going to pick you to go. Lindsay. Lindsay? Okay. Uh, I actually want to put on mistake as an English major. Cool. I've been teaching in Buffalo City Schools for a while. Had kids, quit my job, stayed at my mom. For seven years, now yeah. my baby's in kindergarten, and I'm while well, I was home, I worked on welcomemama.com, and it's a whole new directory for Western New York. Wow, that, that is awesome! Okay. Welcome, oh. mama. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they did it while you know nursing kids and wiping right. noses, and so I did it out legally, and it's very you know, basic. Basic. WordPress. Yeah. So my husband during this time also found his own side gig, um, thrifting. And we realized that that was a huge profit and market that, so now that I'm like going back to work, he said, why don't we do something different in our, our life and mm -hmm. kind of have a more flexible job. So he's got the IT gig at a corporate bank, right. and I've got this like freedom that I don't want to give up anymore. So we're doing two different things at the same time, but I don't know anything about WordPress and I'm scared of SEOs and I don't, I'm an English major, so all this stuff. Uh, doesn't scare me, but I don't understand it. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, well, that's awesome. I mean, it is a journey, right? And I understand that. I have three kids of my own, and I was uh, probably TMI here, breastfeeding mother on the road for weeks a month. So I know exactly what you're now. I'm like, I get to choose whether I do that. How about for you? 
Uh, my name is Mary Grace. I've been selling um, vintage clothing on the internet, on eBay and Etsy for... It's my kids are little. Another one. For about 20, over 20 years. Okay. And I'm doing well with that, but um, I have so much inventory that I want to catalog the inventory on a website instead of a website now you're just not that so I want to catalog all you know catalog the inventory on a website so that I can you know I can expand and I don't have to fill in all the other details and you know fill in other little blocks I can just you know, put it in there and a description of the price and the value you want. I am Shop for Turkey and I am the Public uh, Computer Center Director at the Dunford Public Library. Okay. And we use WordPress and I need to learn more. Okay. I'm Kristen, uh, I'm a graphic designer and primarily worked in uh, print design and realizing that I should be able to design more to um, kind of do my own thing. Um, 
but you're going to need some additional training and knowledge. I will tell you, I'm not, I don't want to scare you, I just want to bring the reality, reality of that WordPress is once you know it, you know it. And it's, the possibilities are endless. It's getting to know it. It's knowing its capabilities. And one of the things that I found out when I started out 10 years ago is that there are just some things that you're just going to have to fall down on your face and learn <laughs> by trial and error because you know there isn't this all-encompassing thing out there because WordPress is open source. It's written by lots of developers and there's lots of things that you can do with it um, outside of uh, building a website. So um, this is going to, if you're looking to build a website and get your message out or learn technology relating to websites and the internet, this is going to give you a good foundation of the key elements you would want in your website. This presentation is incredibly boring. So I might just point to this to get the topic we're supposed to talk about and then take you to some real life sites to point um, to point you in the direction. Okay? Alright, well that gives me an idea because I always like to tweak the workshops to what's relevant in the room. So uh, one of the things when I get together with a client, there's a worksheet that they do, and I always say, what is your goal for the website? Obviously, I have a pet peeve about this thing. Obviously, you have to have a website. But the other thing is, if it's just telling about what you do and who you are and your phone number and your address, it's just a digital brochure. And um, if you're just going to do that, don't go with WordPress because you're going to spend a lot of time and energy for a digital brochure. You know, get a one pager, put who you are, what you do, your phone number, blah, 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 blah. Your website should speak to your clients, or ideal client, or customer's pain point. And, or fill a need for them. Because at the end of the day, your website should do something for you. Do you know what it should do for you? Anybody want to answer that? What should your website do for your business? Bring the customers in that moment. Sales guy. Yes. Generate business. Okay. Sell. It should sell on your behalf. So if I get to a website and I say, oh, I'm ready to lease that, and this is, um, my business and I do all kinds of cool things and we do this and we do that and this is our mission and me, 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 me. your your ideal customer is really not um, really doesn't care about what you do they they uh, they care about what you can do for them okay so having a goal for your website that this is going to be your virtual sales person. This is going to be the thing out there on the interweb that is constantly out there speaking on your behalf to your customer. So when you sit down at the table or you get on a call with a potential client and you're talking to them about what their challenges are, that's the same type of verbiage and language that you want to be using on your site. So your goals for your site should be um, to generate leads and sell on your behalf. Because there are a lot of business models where the website is the closing part of it, um, especially with software and subscriptions. You're not really talking to a salesperson when you're making that transaction, or like eBay, or going to buy something. But if you're doing person-to-person -person sales, or you're business-to-business, -business, um, you, you'll probably end up with the closing piece of that sale. Okay, so. Today we're going to be going over the basics of effective web design. Design is subjective. What you consider good design, I may not, and vice versa. So I want to talk really about the nuts and bolts and the elements of a website that will convert. How many of you are familiar with the word conversion besides Phil, because he's in POS? Your conversion. Does anybody know what it means? It's turning a prospect into a customer. That's one conversion. 
Another conversion is to get people to sign up for something or opt in to an email list. It's whatever your conversion is, I need to convert. I need to get someone to the next step. It is a conversion. Sometimes it's a transaction, sometimes it's a registration, sometimes it's an opt-in to an email list, but conversion is what you're always looking to do on your website. And the, there are basic elements to get people to convert. Um, designing mobile friendly. So today I send out about 70 to 80 Google Analytics reports a month. On average, here's what I see. Between 60 and 70 percent of viewers on these websites are using mobile and there are some cases in some industries Phil you're probably familiar being in POS like grocery and retail um, they're in upward of 80 percent are mobile so having your website be mobile friendly is absolutely critical 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 um, especially if you're a new business because that is uh, that's going to give you a um, it's going to give you credibility about your business. They're not going to look at you and they're going to have to you know zoom in and everything. And oh my gosh, this business is so outdated and you literally just launched. You know, so remember that sometimes your website is the only impression you get because they don't know you yet. They're on the internet. They're searching to solve their problem. They uncover your website. What does it say about your business? Being mobile uh, friendly and responsive will tell them that you are moderate and up to date and that you are um, cutting edge. So understanding SEO, that is such a loaded topic. How many of you are familiar with search engine optimization? So let me just um, give you a really quick description of that. Basically, search engine optimization is being, having um, content on your website that shows up when users of Google or Yahoo or Bing or whatever are searching for products or services that you provide. So I always use the, um, I probably shouldn't really use the uh, example of the plumber. If my faucet is leaking and I, it's leaking, it's not that big of a deal. Right now, it's, it's, I'm going to go online and <coughs> DIY, how do I fix a leaky faucet? How many of you have done this before? Something's broken in the house, or somebody has a rash on it. Regularly, right? Google is our new mama, right? And before we used to call our moms, we ask these questions how we ask Google. So, but when the faucet becomes a point where it is overflowing onto my brand new kitchen floor. What happens at that point with your consumer and your customer? There is no amount of money that is going to prevent me from getting this thing to stop. Now I've crossed the, uh, the threshold from me to pain. And now I am in pain, okay? And now I'm going to go to search it at the internet. I need a plumber to fix that. And boy, oh boy, if you're a plumber and you haven't done a good job on your website, you don't even exist in my world. I need someone right now, and I'm willing to pay $600, $700 for someone to come tomorrow, tonight, um, and you're missing out on that piece of business because you're not showing up. Search engine optimization is optimizing your website for your potential customers when you search for products and services that you accept that you offer. And you can think of that in any realm. I mean, if I'm going to, um, my daughter's getting married, and I want, I love vintage clothing, especially from the 70s. I don't know if that's vintage. Oh, yeah. but, um, but if I wanted something like that for my daughter's wedding or for an event that was coming up, all of a sudden, I'm two weeks out to it. Gosh, I need to get something quick, right? Where do we go? Amazon. Right? eBay, maybe. Um, but if you're good at SEO um, and you're in my area, or not even in my area, you're going to show up. And if I like what you have, I'm going to purchase from you. So that is the definition of SEO. Um, website goals, build brand awareness. I'm going to say um, any marketing person that tells you that uh, right now as you're starting up, 
uh, that awareness is good, I'm going to tell you to run from them. Awareness is for companies like Nike because they have big budgets. They can afford to put those fluffy messages out there on the billboard, just do it, it sounds good, it's cool. You do not. You need sales. You're starting up. So your marketing goals and your website goals should be conversion and lead generation. Okay? Um, drive consideration, generate leads, yep, increase sales, distribute and monetize content. And that's something that um, I have expertise in is monetizing your skill, your secret sauce, what makes you special in your field, um, and how to articulate that throughout your website. Yes, okay, anybody from Marie Forleo? I didn't do this presentation, but I thought it was interesting she was on there. Marie Orleo is a multi, multi million dollar online um, business entrepreneur. And she uh, she's a course creator, like myself, I'm a course creator as well. She generates probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 million dollars a year from uh, an online course called B School. And she has some other ancillary courses. Um, one of the things that uh, when you hire a, a really good web, web developer to do your site and you're not doing it yourself, they back you off from too much, or they should. So you want to keep things simple and clean. Less is more, right? Less is more. So you want to stay away from dark background colors, unless you really know how to do it from a technical perspective. You want to stay away from tons of images, unless you're a photographer and then you're going to have a gallery. But every page should serve a purpose. So if it's the landing page, you're going to tell people how to make their lives better. Period. You're not going to go into all of this stuff and tons of pictures and everything else. Now, here's the other side of it. You want to have at least, at least 600 to 1,000 words on every page. And you can do that very, very um, elegantly and with simplicity. So you want to make sure that your site is what I call a minimalist design. And it's very clear on what you do and how you do it and how you help them. Now, you can use images to support that. And I would encourage using imagery to support that. When you're picking your images, you want to think about one thing. You want to think about eliciting emotion. <clears throat> Every image on your website should serve a purpose. It, is, it either is supporting the content next to it, underneath it, over top of it, and eliciting some type of emotion. And it doesn't have to be negative emotion. You know, there is you know a thing called fear selling, right? You can sell with fear, sure. If you're an insurance guy, that's what you're going to do. You know what if? Um, but your images should elicit emotion and support the content. So choose every image thinking that. I see a lot of people put a lot of images that just, what does this mean? What, what does that do for, for your website, for your customer, right? And images that are going to be relatable as well to your customer, your potential customer. Consistency. This is another thing I see in the DIY realm. One page looks one way, the next page looks the other way. Um, the pages have no consistency in design. So before you even open up the WordPress, you have to decide on a couple of things. Write this down. Two or three colors at most, and they should match your brand or logo. And if you don't have a logo yet, you want to keep that in mind one to two colors on your logo. Um, and within your website, you can incorporate those two colors and then do like a third accent color if you want. But that will keep things very simple and consistent. Plus, with too much color, um, overwhelms people. Look up the psychology of color. Because subconsciously, every time we look at a color, there is an emotion that's associated with it. So make sure that that emotion or that color 
is projecting what you, what you want your player to be. Two fonts. You want a heading font and you want a body font. I, there is a trend uh, lately with a lot of script and it is so pretty and beautiful that they are more than welcome to use script. You know, like that cursive type of writing. Um, just make sure that your body font is very easy to read. I see a lot of people that use these fancy fonts on um, mobiles. They're not very good at all. What font do you recommend? If you go to Google Fonts, you are going to, and you can type in your name, or your business name, and it'll show you all the Google Fonts. Uh, fonts are, will also elicit emotion, and there's four spectrums of fonts that I want to get into it. But an open sans type of font, or a serif, S-E-R-I-F-F, these are types of fonts that communicates sturdiness, and strength, and consistency and stability. The cursive communicates creativity. You can look these up, but just go to Google Fonts and they'll tell you what to pair a heavy font, a body, body font. I tend to stick with Open Sans on the body font because it's very easy to read and it's a Google font. And um, Google really owns the market share as far as internet search right now, so most users are searching on Google. Unless you're serving, um, you know, people 54 plus or maybe 60 plus where they have windows and they just click on the E on the desktop and it takes them to explore. Um, so that is, um, so you want to have color, font, And then elements. These elements can be either an icon that you use as like a bullet point. Um, it can be a background. My background is a, I, my uh, logo is associated with a hexagon. So I use the hexagon throughout my website. Sometimes it's like little bullets. Sometimes it's like a, you know, a very faint background with text on, up over top of it. So choose an element that you can bleed through your design through all your pages. And once you decide on your colors, your font, and your element, these are the things you'll use on every single page. And you won't veer from them. Because if you do, you're going to look very, very amateur. But we talked about font and readability. Um, making sure that your font is readable, but also that it's the right size. So. 16 points is what I use on body font. They say min, um, minimum of 14, but I up it to 16 because my ideal customer is a business owner in their late 30s, 40s, a more mature business, and he may be looking on my site without his glasses. So I always use the 16 or the 18. Here's the thing, your heading, and your body font, right? Two different sizes. One should be around 30 or 40, the other one 14 or 16. You have to make sure it translates on, on um, mobile because as you make the font bigger on a desktop, it looks beautiful. On a mobile, it'll start hyphenating, cutting off on you, things like that. So, all right, Lindsay, what are the three things? that you have to have for your website to be consistent in your design. Okay. Color, font, elements. Color, font, and elements. Yes. All right. All right. Um, does anybody know why uh, blue elicits and how many logos you can think of with color blue? How many logos can you think of that are blue? Anybody want to shout out blue logos? Mm -hmm. IBM. Yeah, yes. AT&T. 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 Huh? Who Are they blue? Oh, are they blue? Blue. Oh, yeah. Who is blue? Twitter. Yeah. So the blue, blue logo. Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chase Bank. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Big friends. You guys are naming. You know why? They have. They choose blue. Blue is trust. If you go on the psychology of color, blue is trust. 
huh? <laughs> and those colors were cho chosen very strategically. Um, and if you go on that psychology of color, you'll see uh, what uh, other colors mean. Now, it doesn't mean if you use green, you're not trustworthy, okay? It's a different emotion. But, um, you know, people like Facebook and Twitter are looking to gain trust from their users. Banks are looking to gain trust. IBM, they need trust from their users, yes? And like red, apparently, it instills anger or... Red's a dangerous color. That's a good point. Even though it's very... Jump. Yes. You know, it's, you know, oh, they yeah. always talk about red in, in, um, mm -hmm. in the advertising that they do because they say, oh, you don't catch the dry, but by the same token. Too much of it you can elicit negative feelings, especially, especially if you're an insecure person by nature. danger. How many women in here will go to a wedding in a red dress? <laughs> raise your hand, please. Raise your hand. Okay. Red is a bold bold color and it is the sign of power and strength and it can intimidate people so with the red joe's right you see in small little parts where you can draw attention to the eye but not overwhelm the emotion all right so for your brand to review consistency in your brand your color your elements and your fonts, and those have to be used in your social media posts, on your Facebook page, on your website, on your on your um, paper invoice, everywhere you have to um, put those, <coughs> and that will create consistency. So when somebody you hand somebody a business card at a networking event, and they go to your website, you're like, "Right site? This thing is brown, and that thing is." You know? And I've seen that. How many of you have seen that? Okay. All right. Uh, what do we got next? We already talked about that. Colors and images. Yes, we talked about that. This is a very important other piece of your website, navigation. So, again, when you go back to conversion and what you want your uh, visitors to do is you want them to take a certain path, right? If you're looking to convert a visitor into something, maybe it's opting into your um, email list, maybe it's purchasing something, maybe it's scheduling a consultation. That is your conversion. When you when a person lands on your landing page, your navigation should help them get there without having to think about it. Call now. Products, services, contact us. Right? Navigation is probably one of the most overlooked um, pieces of a website. So what I like to do is before I even get started, and I'm so glad that some of you have not gotten started because this is a great time to sit down. I wanted to draw it out. I can't find that marker. Is to do a, yes, thank you, a site map. How many of you are familiar with the term site map? Yep. Okay, a site map is a technical term because that when you're done with your website, you're going to submit your site map to Google. And that is what's called an XML document. I won't get real technical on what XML is and what it does. But you'll be able to use a plugin to generate a site map to submit to your search engines. But before you get started on your site, you can actually draw out your site map. Okay? And what I always do is I send a document that has, I start with five basic pages. And if you want, if you would like, you can take my email address down and I will send you what I send to clients when they're thinking about their website. I'm gonna build it, but I need them to think through it. So I can send you those templates. My email address is Lisa at workbee, spelled B-E-A. Dot com and just in the subject line put templates or you can put your business card on the front table and I will email them to you. So I start out with five pages, typical pages of a website. How many of you know what they are? Yell them out. Home page. What else? 
So it's home, contact, product services, what we do, <coughs> about who we are. Purchase, action page, mm -hmm. like an action page. An action page. Get started. Let's go. Let's talk about your work. Order now, right? That's going to take them to the conversion. All right? So these pages here, I make the client say, What's the, what's the objective you want? What's the goal you want to accomplish in your homepage? What is it? Well, I want people to know who we are. They don't care who we are. I'm sorry to tell you, your customers don't care what your you mission statement is. You, you should, but they really don't. Care. You want them to know why they should come to your website. Yes, what you can do for them. Immediately communicate that. I help people. I help you. We provide you with. So you don't have to. Flip, 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 flip. Okay? That is what your landing page, wherever you want them to land, should communicate. So a goal for everything on the page, right? Even the contact page, right? All right, yeah, you're going to put the form up, your phone number, this and that. Think about who your customer is. Would they leverage a chat, an online chat? Would they leverage a, a self-scheduling tool? You know, make it easy for them to do business. Meet your customer where they're at. You know, I'm not a phone person. I don't want to call you. I'm a techie. I want to do, 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 right? Some people want to pick up the phone. So you know, what, knowing your customer is really key um, to creating those objectives. What we do, so um, stay away from speeds and feeds. And get back to how you solve the pain. So if you are providing a service, don't talk about the technical aspects of your service. <coughs> say what the service is, because you have to call it something, or the product, and then articulate what what the, what the result is or the transformation is for your potential client. I apologize, let me just turn this ring around. So having a goal, having a goal, an objective for each page is very important. And say to yourself on each page, what do I want my visitor to do on this page? How will they take action with me or to the next step? And the reason I say this is so critical because when visitors visit your website and they click through to the next thing, and then to the next thing, and to the next thing, Google says, aha, we gave them the right result because they stayed there for a long time and they clicked through to multiple pages. If your visitors get to your site and they bounce off in a minute or so, Google says, mm, that wasn't the right result. So they're going to present you to your potential visitor less. But if your visitors are clicking through, Google loves you, right? And Google doesn't love you until everyone else loves you. So when you are getting traffic and people are clicking through and they're staying on your site and they're taking in your, your content, you get big brownie points with search. So for every page, you should have and a goal in mind of what you want your visitor to do. Even on the contact page, contact us. Have a chat, whatever your, your ideal customer is, is, you know, meet your customer where they're at. Um, but also, you might want to have a button there that says, not ready yet, click here. Let's talk some more. You know, and then you can take them on their journey. So if you think about yourself, 
when you are making a purchase, when you have a problem, there is this specific journey that you take. And Phil, in the old days, right? Well, I don't know. <laughs> we would pick up the phone and call the integrator and tell them what they needed and you know we have all these solutions we were solution selling and today what's happening is your customer is finding their own solution they don't need you anymore to sell to them so very educated on what they need what problem they have and how they're going to fix it and oh by the way if you happen to have the solution you might be able to fix it. But since 75 to 80 percent of consumers, including business owners and everything, will um, search on Google first before they pick up the phone, if you don't show up, you're not going to you don't exist. Mm -hmm. Isn't point per click kind of eliminating a lot of the search engine optimization? Because some of my big competitors, PPC? Like, you know, are toast. They're just throwing so much money at it. They're coming up at the top because they're throwing money at Google. No doubt. If you have a big budget, and you don't feel like writing good content, oh my gosh, yeah, go pay-per-click. Do some Google ads. I have a customer right now paying 128 bucks a lead. But he'll close a $10,000 sale. He doesn't really focus on it. And I have another customer that's spending $7.50 a month on pay-per-clicks, and he generates about 100 leads a month. Seven dollars a lead. This transaction is sixty bucks. So it's around ten percent of your transaction. If you got that kind of, if you've got a budget, then by all means. By all that's means. My, our biggest problem is toast mm -hmm. is the point of sales, and, and they're just throwing so much money at it we can't get in front of them. You know, and they come up five, six times in the top ten. Mm -hmm. So you optimize your site for toast. I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. Sometimes um, you can use uh, your competitors in your keywords. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. Everyone does it. It's not nefarious. It's not black hat. No, when I do a listing, I see first thing I do is I look at what people have sold. And I look at how they sold it. I look at their title. I look at their pictures. I look at their categories. Really? I cut and paste and copy all over the place. You know, I change a few things, but right. you know, I want to know how they how they sold it. I don't now, I very rarely you know what it's called, and it's a lucrative oh, yeah, business. I very it's called rarely. funnel hacking. How many of you have heard of a funnel hack? No. I very rarely list anything without. So, the customer <coughs> journey starts online. Eighty percent of people, their journey starts online. They go and search. They're going to educate themselves. They don't want no savvy salesman coming in and selling something they don't need, right? <laughs> so they search. They pick a few cost, uh, companies off the web, they write some names down, numbers, right? What happens with fun? That's, a, that's called a customer journey, it's a funnel, right? You have a prospect up here, if they get to a transaction, they drop out of the funnel. You start out with 100, 30 are going to actually, you know, do business with you. And that's good closing ratio, 30%. Online, with no human interaction, it's about 16%. So if they end up on your website because they searched for product and services during the buying phase, they're not just, you know, we don't go into Tops to look around, do we? Huh? Do we go to Tops to browse? Heck no. I'm not going on some plumber site to browse. I need something. So if they end up on your site, they need something. Or they're a competitor. And uh, getting them to do business with you is the goal that you should breathe into every page on your website. So do, filling out the template on what's the call to action, what's the goal of the page. Super, super important. Because if you're just kind of really knowing, well, this sounds good today, and tomorrow we do this page, and you're not cohesive mapping and taking your customer, they don't know where to go. You have to take them by hand. Click here. Start now. Call today. Schedule an appointment. Yeah, well, what do I do? I don't know how to use a plumber. I haven't had to use a plumber in 25 years. What do I do? Right? So you have to instruct them. And navigation <coughs> and page layout in your site map is going to be key. Your site map is going to dictate your navigation. It's going to dictate what your menu looks like. So doing this work on the upfront, what's even more important 
then deciding on goals for each page. I'm going to back up five steps. Anybody know? What's more important than having a goal for each page when it comes to your website and business? Your customer? Hmm? I think it has to be your customer. What about your customer? I think you want to be on with something. Please. You're building the website for your customer. So this the whole point you're building the website is the customer. So essentially, they are the number one, right, in this process. But understanding who the customer is. And I have this conversation every single day because I work with online coaches or course creators. And I go to their one like, I am, um, I'm not a fluff person. I don't like fluff. I don't like salesy speak, you know? So if I get to a page, it's like, oh, be the best version of you. And, you know, da -da -da, I'm like, okay, this does not resonate with me. But that person behind the website knows I'm not their customer. You know, if I go to a website and it says, girl, you're going to crush it. We're going to do this. We're going to be busy. I'm like, yeah, this is my person right here, right? So knowing that customer and speaking their language is the most important thing you can do before you even get to the computer, before you do this right now. You can build up your goals and objectives, but how that translates in execution of writing the copy and selecting the images must resonate with your ideal customer or your visitor. I need mean, uh, an I. Everyone heard that loud and clear when they say I. 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 Okay. Um, I have a question about that. Yes. So we see 40% of our population is Hispanic. So part of our website uh, yes, model is, is, yeah, we wanted to include translation. Mm -hmm. And we did see some options for that. Do you have any? On that. Is that yeah, YouTube? there's a few plugins you can use with WordPress that will do translation for you. Are you dealing with a pop population that speaks no English, or they can? Um, some don't speak any English, and okay. then there's some that. Okay. Yeah, there are plugins, but also, um, do you have someone on staff that speaks Spanish? I would have them write a copy. Do you write a copy? Yes. Well, translated and writing for you because here I just did a website with a similar situation. What happens is um, the the um, plugin tool or the translation on Google doesn't hit the dialect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. So if you have a person on staff that's in the community, at the market copy because we ran into that. Mm -hmm. oh. Um. That's a good question, because if that's the population you're serving, that is going to be very important. So you might write it up and then have them, that's what we did, we would write the copy and then we took it over to Louise and she would um, write it all out in Spanish, Spanish gave it back to us and then we would dump it into the pages. And then where there were certain elements where we only used um, like the message, contact us, and then underneath that, contact us in Spanish. And then call, and then call, you know. So or you did it order. Where you would write the English and then the mm -hmm. Spanish. On the key areas, like contact, um, reorder. Okay. In, the, in the reorder form, we put, um, you know, name, gnome, you know, and then all that. And that's what Spanish. we were looking at was you hover over the words, and then it would translate it that way. It can, yeah, it, absolutely. And there's some good translation tools out there, but you just got to be careful with dialect because it can. It, it can be difficult um, translating probably with certain languages and Spanish is one of them. And so is, um, uh, what's the other language that has like 14 dialects? It's an Asian, Southeast Asian language, Filipino. The plugins you are talking about is that you get those through that Elementor? Hmm? Is that where you get the plugins from as I downloaded that Elementor and then I was downloading the plugins? Is that where you get that? Um, there's an area in WordPress called plugins. Yeah. Okay. 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 So uh, knowing who your customer is um, is very important. So if you are, how many of you are going to be building on WordPress? Raise your hand because I'll, I'll really touch on that area. 
American Jews only on WordPress. That's we, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know, yeah. know what the options are. I'm telling you today, do not build on Weebly or Wix or any of that. If you are bent on learning this, WordPress will serve you for a very long time because it's not a website platform like Wix and Weebly. It's a content management platform. So if you decide to mix your business in three years, you can start a blog. You can build a membership. You can build a classified site. It is content management. So, and also, um, it's the best option for SEO. You have more um, control over your SEO than that. Yes? What's the difference between WordPress and like things that host like GoDaddy and so um I'm WordPress and my car is GoDaddy. It's just what hosts me. I sent my car to get somewhere. My house is GoDaddy, it's where or where you can come and visit me. But I'm the website. I reside in the house. Hosting is just where the site lives for traffic and visiting. Yes. But I think what she also means is that like GoDaddy has a template section. Mm -hmm. Where they try to do, yeah. you know, their own, just like a Wix type of thing. So yes. they'll, they'll offer that. But again, yeah, it's not good enough if you really want to do something. You got to go mm -hmm. and actually go to it. You just do the WordPress and then you go to the go to Just like you get in the car and drive. Mm -hmm. um, there are hosting sites that will give you the option to do WordPress um, or use their proprietary site builder. Always use the WordPress because you can take that. You decide to move away from GoDaddy. You can't take that your website if you use their proprietary. And you will decide to move away from your hosting company at some time because hosting companies are like the cool club downtown. They have they ride the way for a few years on and they're not cool anymore. They get too expensive, they get too big when they start adding resources. Okay, so um, if you're using WordPress, the one thing that's going to be so important is picking a theme. And I see this every day, it drives me nuts. <laughs> I teach a WordPress class, and I see them, people come in, they say, oh my gosh, I can't get it to way, the way it looks, because they're using a free theme. Anybody know what a theme is on WordPress? It's downloaded a free theme online, so that's not the way it should work. Well, you can try. Okay. But the way it looks when they advertise you is what is the pro version. Okay. And um, you're probably going to need a page builder with that, too. And oh, by the way, that costs money. Okay. So, um... Buy a theme. And buy a theme that's general. You don't want to lock yourself into stuff. I have used a lot of themes, and some of them, and I'm techie, I can write a, a website in code from scratch, and there are themes I cannot figure out. And, I, and it's like, holy cow. So I've standardized on a theme called DB. D-I-B-I. -I. It's um, 80 bucks a year. I get. I have a lifetime license because I use it on multiple sites, but it's literally, it comes with like 400 page templates. So if you're worried about mobile response and you don't know how to do media queries to get your picture to show up on a cell phone, this thing takes care of that. You pick a template, you change the picture, you put the text in, it's so easy. All right, if you go with Elementor, which is, is its competitor, Elementor gives you elements. So you can draw a uh, contact form over it, a header, where DB lays out the whole page and it's mobile responsive. And there's like 400 page templates for every industry, restaurant, dentist, plumber, this, retail, uh, cafes, medical. Um, but you're going to pay, I think it's like 79 bucks a year for the theme. But we did the updates, it's secure, and it's Google friendly. So I standardized on that and I forced people onto that because those themes that you're going to try and use, um, they're, all, they're not always well coded. And the free ones, you know that how you see the theme, you're like, oh, wow, that's nice. And then when you get the theme, it's like, I can't get it to look like that because it requires some technical skill. Or to get it to look like that, you're going to need the paid version. So I said, tell everyone, if you're doing DIY, pay for the theme. Don't mess around. You're going to spend hours and hours and hours trying to get some free thing looking like you want it to look. And unless you have a developer or someone familiar with CSS, you are not going to get it to look like how it was advertised on WordPress. Follow me on that? Okay, cool. All right.
So here are the things we've covered so far. We're jumping a little over. I just want to make sure that we're, we're getting these foundations. One, know your ideal customer, right? Two, have an objective for every page and goal and make sure that you're speaking the customer's language. When that customer visits your, your site, I know this is dramatic. I'm a musician, so I might be a little dramatic, but you just want to pierce the heart of that customer. Have you ever visited a website or read something and said, oh my gosh, this is me. This is exactly what I need. Have you ever done that? That person writing that copy knows exactly who you are. And you may not be ready to buy now, but you are forever going to remember that website. <coughs> And I know that when people search to solve a problem, they'll visit, on average, 20 sites. They'll only remember the ones that really spoke to them. So your copy is to speak to my heart your customer. And tell them what to do on every page. Lead your customer to that journey of conversion, whatever <coughs> it looks like for you. In the medical practice, it might be book an appointment. It might be schedule your consultation. And make it easy, you know, make it easy. I have a medical client, medical uh, client in the medical industry, they have 14 locations. And before we did their, all their we do a website for each region, you know, of their business. And before we did it, we talked to the customers. And you know what they told us? I hate calling, I wait on hold. All I want to do is reorder my slots. All I want to do is schedule an appointment with the therapist. And I have to wait, and then I get transferred, and then she's not there, and I leave a voicemail, and then she calls me back, and I'm not home. That's so right now. If they went to their competitor's site, they can book an appointment. They can schedule a consultation with the therapist. They can order their supplies. They can go transfer from another provider very easily right there on the website. I'll have to click, 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 click. So make it easy for your customers to do business with you. And there are people that just say, I want to talk to someone. So you're going to give them options, right? You're going to give them the phone number. You're going to give them the contact. Maybe you're going to chat now. Um, making sure that you have good navigation in your site map, that people know how to get to what they need quickly. The worst thing that you can do is have someone visit your website and not be able to find something. I'm looking for something in specific. For you, very important. I want dresses. So having that search bar, boom, front and center on the header. What are you looking for? How many retail stores do you go to? What are you looking for? Let me help you get there. Just like when you're greeted at the front door of the store, they help you get to the department, right? So having... Um, a very clear path for your customer, having objectives, knowing who your customer is, and writing copy that resonates with them. And I have even seen in coaching, uh, the coaching world, and I'm an old-fashioned girl, I will admit, I am not a fan of profanity, but more and more I have seen profanity. And um, yeah, yeah, and it works, and it converts, because that's what resonates with some people. Awesome. That's some people, that's what those things. And I, you know, when I first started John, aren't you concerned that you're going to offend someone? Nope. I said, those aren't my peeps. My peeps will love that one. Okay. So, you know, we're customers and we'll be able to write a copy. Any questions on a site map and navigation? None? None at all? All right. Home page. You can write these down. Very important. None of these are as important as how you tell them what you do to make your life better. Yep, it's important to have a logo. It's important to have that menu across the top or off to the side, making it very easy for them to find the information they are looking for quickly, how to contact you, search box, Sometimes a search box on the home page isn't necessary. Social media icons, if they want to follow you. 
But nothing is as important as what you say. So we're going to talk about two areas of your home page, and really any page, because the home page is important. Above the fold and below the fold. Yes, Joe. So um, maybe I just don't know enough yet, but like the search box, you can set that up where it's just searching your page or your site or your mm -hmm. page is associated with Oh, yes, with just your site. Okay. And is that part of when you do WordPress? Is WordPress that... comes inherently most, yeah. WordPress is like this platform. And the theme is like the template, mm -hmm. right? So WordPress is the house that comes with the door. Mm -hmm. You can search, right? You can go in and look around. And the theme is the colors on the walls and the drapes and the furniture. And it's all pretty and cohesive. And, you know, so WordPress is inherently, comes inherently with the search box. Okay, so and that search box is just for your word. Just for your site, especially for retail. That's something you'll leverage on every single page. So above the fold means uh, anything, when I land on the page, that's the first thing that fits in my screen. Whether it's this size, this size, this size, or this size. It's above the fold. That's the first thing I see. You're going to fight two battles in that area. One is SEO, and one is making sure your customers know they're in the right place. Because that's it. You get three seconds. How many of you come to a website after that? No, that's not it. It might have been it, but they didn't tell you. They didn't communicate it properly, right? So there's a couple of things you want to accomplish. One is you want to say very concisely how you help and using the keywords that they would search with. We build websites that can that convert your visitors to customers. Do I need to say any more? I've got my build websites, my keywords in there. I've got um, how I help them. Will help them convert their visitors to customers. Right. Below the fold. All right, boom, you got me. I'm staying longer than three seconds. Let me scroll down. That second piece of copy is equally important. So, this is where you're going to elaborate on how you help. So, if I am I'll just, I'll just use, I'll use my own industry as, as an example. So we help, we help you create better experiences, uncover new opportunities. I'm speaking to my customer. Help you create a better experience for your customer. I help you uncover opportunities you would otherwise be able to find without me. Okay? I'm telling them what I do for them right underneath that. It's in a paragraph. Stay away from the words um, you, you, or I, say you, or your company, or your team. You want to tell them what you do for them. Could you repeat stay away from which words you say? That like, oh, I can help I you do this. Do. We're so good. Okay. We do this. We build websites. We know SEO, you know. <laughs> and how you can go into all the technical aspects of that. You know, uh, I have a client who you know, can help you eliminate and highlight your brand. So if you're looking to really focus on branding, that might resonate with you. But say how you help your customer underneath that and be more descriptive than you are about the header. And then tell them what to do next. Schedule a call. Take the quiz. So as you walk them through that page, some pages are real short. You build a page, um, and the customer says, I don't want my people clicking. You don't want them clicking. You don't, you don't want them scrolling. You don't want them scrolling on too much. Sometimes a website is built on one page. One page website. You can scroll over your um, page. But this customer said, I don't want them going past this. So, so I've noticed that uh, there are some sites that believe more in, in as you continuously scroll. Mm -hmm. But does that affect your SEO? Like, is, if you're, does this, do they count scrolling? Like, because, or they, they're still counting the amount of time that that Time. Yeah. Okay. So, so mm -hmm. because 
you're at that page and you're scrolling down and it increases the time. Yes. So that will be fast. Those are two KPIs. So the clicks are, yeah. is one aspect, but scrolling is another. That's correct. Okay. And clicks could be the submit button, but not the contact button. But it's the time you spend on that site that's really being determined. That's that's more important than the click through. Because you might click through and spend 10 seconds on each page. And as a whole, you spend a minute on the whole site. So is there uh, a weighting which is more important, the time or the clicks, or is there? They're equal. OK. Mm -hmm. They're equal. Um, I would say time, because that means you, you're reading content. OK. And, and if everyone had the answer to the Google algorithm, we would be many worse. It's a big <laughs> secret. But those are what, that's what gets measured in the, um, the Google analytics, that first overview is page views and time spent on each page. And new versus returning. So if you have a lot of returning visitors, right? Google doesn't love you until. So if you have a lot of reads, so that's one of the things they measure on Google Analytics, one of the first three points is page views, time, and new versus return. Okay, um, above the fold, below the fold, two important areas, and then telling uh, your visitor what they should be doing next. So if, they, if you want them to just keep scrolling and read on, you're going to use terms like, this is how we've helped, da, da, da. And then you go into the next area. So, oh, I want to see how they've helped Jane up the street. I'm going to read on to that. And then you tell them about Jane. But if your problem is this, we can help you do that. And then you read on. So you're going to use those transition sentences to cue your visitors in on what to do next. How does above the fold and below the fold work? Same concept. Yeah. Because again, no matter what size the screen is, boom, three seconds. They're going to decide what, well, it's like six seconds. They're going to decide if they stay or not. They can scroll below that fold. There's two areas. But if you go to a website, anytime you're going to see, hey, this is the header, and you start to consume this content, and you're making the decision in that process whether to read on, click through, bounce off, or back, go back. Right? Think about your own behavior. So no different than your visitors. But above the fold is the most important, because that's the first thing they see. And within those three, six seconds, they're going to decide whether to stay or not. And then below the fold, now you're going to start keeping them there. So you've got to get into it a little more detail and tell them what to do next. Tell them how you're going to help. How you're going to solve the pain. How you're going to fill the need. Any other questions on that? Yes, Mary Grace. So in the case of what I'm trying to build is an online catalog. Mm -hmm. So in, on the homepage, we have cat categories, dresses, tops, bottoms, whatever. Mm -hmm. So is it best to set it up so that they just keep going? Or, is, or do you do it in pages so that they? Well, essentially, they're going to have to click through to a page, right? right. So I've seen retailers do it a couple of different ways. And it's funny because I'm working on it up closer, as we speak. Mm -hmm. We talk about this quite often. When the visitors get there, I've seen it where right there above the fold, and you've seen it too, if you go on like Ann Taylor or Bonnie Kirby, you can choose styles, you can choose categories. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they get on with a retailer and it's right there what you're looking for. And I search what I'm looking for. Sometimes it's the brand and right underneath that is the shop. You know. Mm -hmm. So they don't they right there, there's the whole shop right there. So they do their header. You know, when you, if you're a lifestyle brand, especially that first uh, image and message is important. But like um, grocery and commodity type of products, stuff that you have to get, it's usually right there, right there. Because we we don't want to browse through tops online, right? I mean, I love tops. I love weapons. We're not browsing. We, I know I need sugar. I know I need this. What's on sale this week? So those things are front and center as soon as they look the page. Lifestyle brands, in your case, a little bit different. You can have categories right there as soon as they open up. Dresses, shirts, pants, blah, 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 blah. Or you could do the search bar. It just depends on who your customer is. You know? But I've seen also when they put above the header, they do the search, and then right below that is the entire shop. 
Um, and that's also, if you're a retailer, you don't want to spend a lot of time on copy mm -hmm. on that front page. You want to get them shopping. Right. You spend your time with the copy inside the product descriptions because that's going to be the SEO for you. All right, so that's the home page. Yes. Just a quick question about the home page with regards yes. to lo login. Is that important to have that there? Because sometimes I think people. Well, it depends on if you have a portal where customers can log in. Okay. For patients. All right. Then yes, it needs to be there. But if you don't need your customers logging into a website, then it doesn't need to be there. But if you do have some type of membership or site, healthcare, where customers log in, look at their account, retail, retail, they can log in and see what their cash orders were if they've created an account. Um, but that's only necessary in those instances. You know, your customers log in into your WordPress, right? All right, primary and secondary navigation. So there, so if you go to a website, you're going to see that top. Uh, top line navigation. That's the home, contact, problem, who we are, what we do, and then let's get started, right? And then that secondary navigation might be your address, your phone number, your social icons. Those are a little smaller. Sometimes they're up way at the top. Sometimes they're on the bottom. I see, uh, lots of times I see navigation that's, you know, you click over here and it slides out, right? But let your customers know where to click. You're going to have to have some indication. If you're using a theme, it takes that guesswork out. Using a good paid for theme, you're not going to have to think about that. You're going to put in your pages, you're going to create a menu, and it's going to do that work for you. It'll let you decide on what kind of menu do you want. You want it to slide in. You want your logo in the center. You want your logo on the side. And you're not going to have to think about creating good navigation because that theme is going to do that for you. Um, call to action. Every single page has to have a call to action. We, we've pretty much beat that one, right? Everybody knows that. Um, links. All right. Two very important things. Um, Google also ranks on your links. Links inside your website and links coming to your website from other websites. So what you want to do is you want to link to other content within your website. And you can do that through buttons, so you can do that through text. So read more. That's a link that they would consider that goes maybe to an article. Or schedule now. That takes you to another page. Or uh, you state a fact or a statistic, and you cite the source, and you link to the source. You know, Americans say that 80% of, of consumers will search the internet, says XYZ research. And I link to that. It goes to the site. So when you're linking um, within your site, it's called a link strategy, and it's internal linking, and what's called backlinking is um, people getting to your site from other sites. So if you have friends that want to list your website, you want to get on Yelp, those other business listings, maybe you want to go to a chamber of commerce, and your links out there, that's all back backlinking. This one's important. You ready? Anytime you create a social media post, put your website link in there. Because when you get a hit from a high ranking site, that's SEO gold. So if I'm getting hits from Facebook, Facebook's a high ranking site. It's an authoritative site, according to Google. And people are coming to my site from a high ranking site, uh, it gives me credibility with um, Google. Or Bing or any search engine. So that's backlinking. Internal linking is when you're linking to other content within your site or you're linking to content um, outside your site. Yeah. So just so I understand, so you're in Facebook and you make a post in Facebook and then you put your website at whatever it is. And if they select the link, when they look, they're looking at Facebook and then they, they select there. They click the link. And that hyperlinks you to your web page. Mm -hmm. That's the back link. And that, and, and you'll get some credit for that. Yeah. Yeah, you get brownie points with Google. Yeah. I work with a lot of small business owners. I'm a, an instructor at the Women's Business Center at Peaches College. I'm also a SCORE mentor. And I teach DIY marketing. 
So I see a lot of business owners that work for Mark Zuckerberg. I'm going to tell you a story very quickly about Starbucks. Ten years ago, Starbucks put about 30 to 40 million dollars in building a community on Facebook. And they built a following of about 5 million followers on Facebook. And they would be sharing their ads and sharing their specials and sharing this, telling the store now, here's a new recipe, blah, 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 blah. They were cranking, they were building community. And then someone at Facebook said, we're going to change the algorithm. And the business sites aren't going to show up in the feed as much as they used to. Because we want more personal connections. Okay? So Starbucks, um, now with 5 million followers, when they post a post, about 3,000 people see that. Where before, it was like, you know, 2 million, 50% of their followers can see it. Now it's a very small fraction. So what they did, and there has been a lot of talks from the experts on this, is they went out and built a rewards program. And they took their community and brought it to the, back to their own site. So now, you know, when you drink Starbucks and rewards program, you can call or get the app or pre-order, they took it off Facebook. They spent all that money and all that time and energy building this amazing community, and then it is not producing because someone made a decision. Do not work for Facebook. Facebook is a venue for you to promote your business, to get the word out, and it's free. Love it. Love, love, love it. But take your visitors to your website from Facebook. Take them off the app. Don't be afraid to do that. Because who said, well, I don't want to take them off the app. I'd rather just have them go to my page. And, you know, if they're that lazy, maybe they're not your customers, right? Maybe this is it's convenience. They might have not have that pain yet or that need to come off Facebook to your website. Don't work for social media giants and tech giants. Build your community on your website. And you can you can um, build groups on Facebook. They become very lucrative. I have a lot of clients making money on private groups. You're paying to get in, but you're going to their website. You're jumping on the shopping cart. You, the her, the coach gets the the PayPal or whatever it is, and she adds you to the group. You know. What um, kind of groups? Huh? What kind of groups are popular? Masterminds. Um, group coaching is very popular for someone who can't afford a one-on-one -on -one coach. They will uh, get into a group pro uh, group uh, coaching program. I have a client right now who generates about twenty twenty-five thousand dollars a month from group coaching and Facebook groups. There's there's a woman on Facebook that I I discovered her on Facebook called Juggling Jenkins. Tiffany <laughs> Jenkins is her name. Okay. And. She's just taking off. She started doing, you know, just doing mm -hmm. honest posts. Yeah, and then, that's how it's and then she became so popular that then now she's doing book tours. Yep. And so group tours. She does she things on the message on YouTube. She's got she's got a powerful message. And there's started thousands of those. Just flags on lists on Facebook. We used to work with a guy, Doggy Dan. Have any of you ever heard of Doggy Dan? Me either. And this dude. Teaches people how to potty train their puppies at 750 bucks a practice. And you're bringing them out a little bit off. <laughs> so, one thing. I never heard of Doggy Dan. <laughs> but I know him now. <laughs> so, what is GoDaddy doing right now? They're going around and they're linking everyone's social media and their website together. They're taking pictures and they're posting them. Is that I know what GoDaddy is. I spent a lot of time getting people. Yeah, I mean they're paying like three, four hundred bucks a month for the service, and they're linking all that. I'll be honest with you, I'm seeing them on my Twitter, I'm seeing them on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, I don't they're know doing what really their new pictures and stuff. I so. don't know what their new service is. It's it's blowing up right now. Yeah, I don't know. So something you want to look at? Um, there's a lot of services out there that will help you with that. Like, um, but if you don't have the budget, you need to start now. You know, that's another that's another. Reason. Who would, you, who would you recommend? Somebody has to host WordPress. Oh yeah, lots of people do. So um, there is a, a hosting called Flywheel, SiteGround, A2 Hosting. I use a company called InMotion Hosting. Uh, there's tons, tons of um, 
those are like the, the market offers right there. Mm -hmm. Some of them are more expensive than others. These are for hosting. Here's the thing with hosting is probably one of the key indicators is page speed. The average user will not stay on site longer than six seconds. If it takes longer than six seconds to load, most people will bounce off in three. If your site's not loading in three seconds, they're, they're out. They're going on to something else. So your hosting is probably the, the most critical de decision you'll make because you can't even get a visitor to stay to read that amazing above the whole copy you created, right? <laughs> if your site isn't loading. So if you get on Wix and you get on Weebly or you get on GoDaddy, you're sharing a story <coughs> with thousands and thousands and thousands of other websites. And I felt the pain with this so many times I can't even tell you how painful it is when somebody over in freaking Tucson decides he's going to do something crazy with his website and mine comes to a molasses. Or I go to my site, da, 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 and I end up on somebody else's site because somebody got a virus, didn't protect their website, because I'm sharing this space, it's like a commie, you know? <laughs> you know, you're living in a house with a bunch of other people, and if they're not cleaning your, their dishes, you're gonna get sick. So pick a web, uh, web hosting provider that has the speed built into it, and if you can afford it, write this acronym down of VPS. This is a virtual private server. This um, means what happens is, is I have a street of houses, and we all live on the same street, but we're all in our own house, and what you do next door doesn't affect me. <laughs> you know, it costs a little bit more money, but your speed will, it's, it's it's the, the, the effect of a VPS as opposed to what they call shared hosting. And shared hosting is the GoDaddy, the Wix. You can even get shared hosting on site. Anytime you go to a hosting service that's $3 a month, you're on shared hosting. And you're probably on the bottom end of the shared hosting. And at first, your site's going to be really, really fast. All the is working great, like I said, from experience. And then all of a sudden, and I'm troubleshooting page speed and come to find out, it has nothing to do with my site. So I'm going to call support. A lot of times the support will say, oh no, there's no problems on the server. The house is fine, everything's fine. And then press on. So page speed, if, if, if it takes longer than three to six seconds, your visitors are gone. They're gone. So that's that's another indication for, for uh, Google. So what's the order of magnitude of a uh, VPS versus uh, shared service? That's what's the order of magnitude of expected pricing. Is it double or triple? Is it? So you can get a good hosting platform that is going to be safe, reliable, and fast for about 50 bucks a month. And you probably will <laughs> Because you guys are seeing three and five and seven dollars. You just remember you get what you pay for. If you want to start there and there is a pathway to upgrade, like on InMotion or some of the other ones, like you said, okay, you can start here at seven bucks a month and you can build this pathway. And they'll migrate you, they'll migrate for you, you know. The worst ones are GoDaddy. It's the worst. It is the absolute worst. Um, and they a la carte everything. Your hosting provider should give you, should give you a backup plan. That should be including in your hosting. Because if something happens and you break your site, and you will, I promise you, you're going to break your site in this process because you're going to need help and you're going to do something that breaks your site. You want to be able to restore a previous version. They should be giving you an at mybusinessname.com email address. If you have a domain and you're going and you're putting your domain on a hosting program, you should get that email address for free for free. GoDaddy is all a la carte. My hosting company gives us free SSL. I don't have to buy an SSL certificate. That's like 100 bucks a year, right? Now I can spend that money on a, on a theme, on a good theme. So those are the things that you should be getting with your hosting company. And you should have good <coughs> support. You should be able to call anytime and never settle for, oh, um, it's not our server, it's, you know, it's WordPress. It could be something on WordPress, 
but they'll help you get to the answer. So I live with this guy that builds servers for a living. Perfect. And he keeps telling me that we should you host our own, it's my husband. No, he doesn't. <laughs> but, um, and he keeps saying, we should just build our own sites and host it from our house. But I'm like, we don't, we don't have DSL internet. Like, how is that going to affect? Oh, he has DSL? In our home. Yeah, oh, right. yeah. No, 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 no. So, like, no, if no, we're no. hosting, we're not, our, our website is going to be. You could tell. If, if he builds servers, you can host on your own server. Okay. Yeah. Um, but he better have a very fast right. kick and butt server with an internet service to, rely, to, to go with that. Yeah, you're not going to beat the guy in Pittsburgh who has a room filled. Right. This is what they do. You know, you know who's on servers? Netflix. These movies sit in a server room somewhere. You call it up, it's not going anywhere. I expect you to load a Netflix movie, and it takes a long time. What do you do? Find another movie. Right? <laughs> there's a problem on the server. There's a problem with the internet. There's a problem with the movie. But you're not going to sit there and wait for the movie to load. Because this is it's how our society is built. Okay, so links to blog posts, social media links, if you know about that. A brief about paragraph. Again, I'm going to argue that and say, above the fold, what is it that you do? You're going to fight two God, well, to serve two gods. It's SEO, and then how you solve pain. And then underneath that, right underneath that, you got to get, you got to keep them there and tell them in more detail what you do for them. What's the transformation for the customer? Not what you do. It's what you do for them. And if you keep talking their language and you keep speaking to them in a way that says, "Wow, yes, I, this is exactly what I've been looking for," um, they're going to do business with you without question. All right. Moving on, we only got a couple more minutes. The footer. The footer is that little area. I should have brought some websites up, but I didn't. My mouth goes. My mind doesn't. Um, the footer is at the bottom of the page, and it's for really static information, like your contact. You can put product categories in your footer. You can put um, your navigation in your footer, so like your pages you can click on. Because once they get way down there on the bottom of the page, they're able to navigate. You can put your social media icons. It's just static information that you want to show up on every single page. That's what your um, footer should be. Also, any copyrights, any um, uh, trademarks, so your name with the, with the trademark thing, um, your company name with the copyright thing, um, any type of legal notices should go on there. Like, there's some websites say if you copy anything off of this site, you will be you know, we're going to come after you. Um, also, under here, you should have any awards or associations you belong to. So if you belong to a business association or an industry association, that's where you want to do it and link to them so that people can go say, okay, what is this if they belong there? Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, let's see. So if you can think of some questions. Anybody have questions? Are you familiar with Squarespace? Yeah. What do you think about that? Um, it's, it's really great if you have, if you're selling on uh, an e-commerce platform. What is the question? Okay, it's great for that e-commerce and you don't know, you're not technical. It's pretty good. But you're going to be in charge of driving traffic. Because just like on Wix and Weebly, you're going to be on a server with thousands and thousands of other mm -hmm. e-commerce people, and you better be really good at SEO or drive traffic. Mm -hmm. But it is a good platform if you want to get up and running and not deal with all the techie stuff and not mm -hmm. deal with the learning curve of plugins of WordPress. Mm -hmm. so, Where can we go to learn more about WordPress and SEO after? I mean, it feels like we've got... I'm so to... glad you asked that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, <coughs> um, so I teach a course called WordPress to Wealth. It is an online course. I launch three times a year. I will be launching 
um, next month. Again, opening the doors, the course isn't open all the time because I updated it. Because obviously, technology changes so much. So if you're interested in that, I'll put together a code to offer the attendees here. And you get the DV theme in that if you're um, with, the, with the course. All the way down, now, 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 now. We'll get to because you guys are kind of, well, how much does it cost? Right? What's the price? Um, but if you just write that down, WordPress to Wealth, um, you'll be able to see the uh, price of it. And the price does change based on launch, based on when I open the doors. So you get a free premium theme and you get a practice site. So you're going to get a practice site, so everything that you've learned and each module, um, you'll be able to go practice on. If you want to keep the site, I'm going to bundle up those files and send them off with you. Or you can stay on in motion hosting and you just transfer all that beautiful work you just did to a real life site. Okay. I'll, um, I'll come up with a coupon code if anyone's interested, but I don't, I don't open the doors until next month um, because we just uh, launched, launched in May. And with that, you get a free theme? You get the, free, you get the premium DV theme. Yep. What if we have a different theme? Yeah. Yeah, so no, um, the modules they do not focus really on the theme. It focuses on the things we talked about today. You know, understanding who your customer is, where the place things, making things mobile friendly. And then there's a section in there called WordPress Mastery. So that module covers everything. Take the theme away. Forget the theme. You don't even need a theme to get on WordPress because WordPress has its own free theme. It's 2019 now, right? It's just start blogging right away. But that module just focuses really clear on just WordPress, SEO, tagging, categories. For you, it might be a little different with, because you're serving, you're providing a service, right? You're medical. What kind of medical services are you providing? Uh, we do primary care, dental, behavioral health. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's some really good dental themes out there. We look at Juggalon, because we looked up, there were so many themes that we were completely overwhelmed. Yeah. So we looked up the top like 20 themes for of, dentists. in healthcare. Oh, okay. And so Juggalon was one that we really liked because we were looking at mobile friendly translation. Yeah. We didn't want to scroll. Yep. Um, so I'm not Did sure. you purchase it already? We didn't, no. Okay. Okay. The only thing I would say the benefit of DV is if you ever want to do a refresh next year or two years from now, you'll probably have to change the theme. Okay. And then it's a whole new learning, learning curve. Okay. With DV, it's like 400 themes inside a theme. Okay. You know? Well, we're at the baby stages, so. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, um, own the, you know how I found DV? <laughs> I joined a developer group because I was completely frustrated with learning a new theme for every client. So I joined a developer group to say, okay, how do I standardize? So I can create this process and repeat it for every customer, but then give them a customized product at the end. And, and I went to a developer group in Buffalo, and there's probably 11, 12 of us, and more than half was standardized on TV. Because, not because of the flexibility with design, because these guys were the big dogs. Like they had no problem coming up with some beautiful, crazy custom design, but it was more for the customer. Because when they handed over the site, like we needed something that was super user friendly, drag and drop, change pictures very easily, change the look of a page like this. So that's why I standardized MDB. So if you're interested in taking the course, you can email me. I open the doors next month. Um, one of the sections in here is monetization. So the module that I cover is how to monetize your website. And for a dental office, you absolutely have to have an area, and I don't know how much of your services are covered, you know, through benefits, but you want to have an area where someone can go pay the bill. I know that's a big problem I used to have with one of my dentists. Like, you know, write a check and drive to Lewiston? Like, come on, we're in the 21st century. Let me get on there. Now I can pay all my doctor bills now. Go on the hospital website. Da, 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 da. Um, so uh, monetizing your site is very important. Let your customer pay for something. 
or buy something. Does well, this work? That. Well, they've all seen that. There's patient portals now where they can get your documents. And, yeah. yeah, that's HIPAA. You be, uh, that's, that's just that's the link, right? That right? just takes you. Putting in because we do have that. So you're going to have, um, so what I have done is I build domains that say, okay, mydoctorsoffice.com, and then it's patients.mydoctorsoffice.com. So I separate it from the main domain. It should be separated, and a subdomain doesn't cost any extra money. And um, you don't slow the site down. People are searching, right? And um, you can secure that in different ways. I have no experience with HIPAA, and as soon as somebody says HIPAA, I run. Like, this guy wanted them to upload their prescription from the doctor. I'm like, no, yeah. not too bad. <laughs> yeah. there, are, there are people that specifically software solutions, web people that do that, and they're trained, because that's one area that you just don't want to DIY. You know, get a, get a professional for HIPAA or PCI compliant. You know, if you're doing PCI. Are you in the medical field, Joe? No, but I, I've noticed uh, with a lot of the medical fields, it looks like somebody is specifically selling that module to that part. There's, yeah. there's a lot of consistency to it. Yeah, and there is, you know, there are I'm equal implications sure. and regulations. Anything like that's regulated, don't listen to a thing I said today. If you have a business that's regulated, go get somebody who is an expert in those regulations, like HIPAA. PCI compliant. I avoid PCI compliant taking credit cards because I use um, WooCommerce and it's, it's a plugin for WordPress. And I integrate it with PayPal and PayPal takes care of all that for me. So I have to do PCI compliant. We use it on I use an outside vendor for doctors that have the HIPAA and the PCI compliance. Mm -hmm. It's yep. not cheap. It's not cheap. Uh, <laughs> it's because uh, it's specialized. You do need a specialized person for that yeah. if you do that because I take that right in front of me to take payments and if you're not PCI HIPAA yep. you're going to get yourself in big trouble. And I was in your field for eight years, eight and a half years. So, oh, okay. so I would have to get, you know, get a security scan to go into the to the server room that Pep Boys are trying to carry. You know, um, so yeah, PCI <laughs> compliant. But if you're selling online, you can avoid that by using Stripe, Square, PayPal. They take care of that for you. But if you're going to say, I want to build a shopping cart right into my site, and you're just starting now. And people who do that are like the big, big brands, they have big budgets, they customize their shopping cart. But everything out there today on WordPress, you can basically get what you need, a great shopping cart. Joe, what's your business again? That's okay. No, I came in late. Um, it's uh, recycled building materials. Very cool. So, what are you going to do with that recycled building materials? You're going to make building materials or you're going to do something? No, so the real business, the real business is, um, is actually taking uh, post-industrial, post-consumer materials and then turning them into new building materials. Uh, so that, but the reason I'm here is, uh, part of it is, it, it, I have a couple other businesses and, I, and I've always meant to be a little more hands-on with the website development, so I want to get a better idea of what, how things work. Okay. So you can now well, go back I, to your we, website. We definitely, yeah, the, yeah, the website definitely needs to be able to reflect we're going to need some online. It, it's it's possible because of all the big boy competition. Where we might need to sell direct for in the beginning until we can, until we can get some of those uh, agreements in place with, with distributors and stuff. But um, so yeah, we, we, I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to double down on the website on some website development now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm getting on the ideal customers and your distributor yeah, will be different from your. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Two or even the homeowner or the... Yeah, two different planning pages. You'll have to have maybe three contract or homeowner or distributor. So that, because those are three, three different messages. And, um, I say that because I sit on the Builders Association board and I'm So I work with some of the distributors like that. I always talk about how the contractor just messaged everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, who else came in late? Hi. Hi. Your name? Kevin. Kevin? Yeah. And your business? Uh, I run a uh, KB Safety. It's a forum where I do teach defensive driving classes and uh, point insurance reduction classes to people. And I also do the 
uh, the OIC class as well. Um, I just pretty much a lot of it for me. I've been having success. I don't do it that much. Uh, mostly a weeknight here and there, and then maybe on a Saturday. But uh, I've had success with word of mouth and going mm -hmm. to certain companies and doing yep. classes. So I've, I've had success there, but I'm not really. And that is a, that's the best way to get yeah. business. The only issue with word of mouth is when you're trying to break out of, ge of a geographic area, yeah. or um, you're trying to break. Well, people say I heard about you, but I want to go look you up. Hmm? Then people say I heard about you, but they go oh, look sure, you up. Oh, sure, sure. They do their homework yeah. and they don't see a website. You, um, if, if, if I if my best friend is using Joe, her materials in her kitchen, I really don't care what your website looks like. Unless you can't find it. No, no, she told me you're amazing. I'm good with that. A referral trumps, a good referral from a trusted person in your life will trump everything. Do a grease. Yeah. If my mom, who I trust with my life, says, call Joe. I'm calling Joe. I'm not even going on the website. So that is. Um, but for you and your business, a referral, a, a slight referral is a lot different because of the choices in the industry and especially the environment today where you're at. Um, with this shortage of inventory and housing and all of that, you are in a very volatile industry. So you do need more than just a referral. But a dentist does not. Yeah. A landscaper does not. A web developer does not. I got a referral from my biggest client. I did um, I did a website, Bubble Fresh Therapy. And she does fresh therapy. It's like the new massage. Have you heard of it? I mean, she, you know, she gets on top of these buffalo bills and this little girl, you know, she's stretching them out. But she does um, a CEO. He comes in once a week. And he's like, yeah, I'm looking to revamp my website. She's like, oh my god, you got to call me stuff. Blah, 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 blah. This guy calls me. I had an appointment in about three days. And um, he just, in the office, said, okay, let's do it. I didn't even give him a proposal. I could have charged him a million dollars. Let's go. Okay, I'm ready. So coming from Carrie, that referral to him, because him and Carrie have been friends for a long time, he didn't need to go look me up. He, did, he knew um, my proposal was going to be reasonable and honest and had a budget to spend. So the referrals are the best way. But again, you know, you got to incentivize people to refer you. I mean, how often is that someone looking to build a website? It's once in three, five years and then they refresh. So I got to always keep reminding people to refer me. Um, but if I do, in those five years, I can do some SEO and some paid ads, and I can provide some value on my content, on my website, my WordPress, not my course, but my other site, then I show up and I check my Google Analytics every single week. And uh, one other thing that you want to get on immediately as soon as you start your business is Google My Business. Because here's what Google My Business does. It's present, now they changed the algorithm last year. This is like the bone that Google's throwing to us small guys. No more do I have to spend $200,000 on SEO if I serve local customers. Because before this didn't happen. But now if I have a Google My Business page, and I'm active and I get reviews, get reviews on Google, then what happens is if someone's searching for me, or searching for a website, uh, if I'm searching for someone to build me a website, everyone in my 25 mile radius shows up first. And all the big dogs show up. So get Google My Business, because if you're serving the local clientele, it's your best shot at showing up in search. I check that almost daily and I post to it twice a week. You know, I put my offers on there, I put my services on there because it's a Google product. Don't you think they're gonna favor their own product? They can even build a website in there too. You can build, take advantage of all of that that they offer and it's free. And they've been even going to every almost every city in America to treat, teach business owners how to use Google for business. So uh, do that. Any other questions? We have just one yes. um, What do you suggest for ADA compliant? Like making it ADA compliant? I Accessibility. Guess? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, have know no like that, but I know there's tools and plugins for that, specifically yeah. audio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of using like colors and different 
backgrounds, but yeah. it's visually impaired. It's, oh, okay. so it's, it's more visually impaired. Right. Yeah. They don't have a lot of experience with that. But if you just did some basic internet word, uh, search, I know there's plugins in WordPress for it. You'll be able to add, like, translate to audio for every session. Okay. Um, yeah. The only thing is, I don't know how the user would interact to say, yes, click here. You want to click here, say yes. You know, we have to do that too. Right? Yeah, we've looked into it a little bit, but that's one of our next steps. Yeah, we have to that area. And you're going to need to be on it. Why are they sending you some permission? Yeah, possibly. So they'll be sending you like health insurance number and things like that. We haven't gotten that far yet because we're going to try to see if we're in the MR, how it works with the website. So mm -hmm. that's right now. Yeah. Yeah. But our IT department knows a lot of that. Yeah. So They're just going to open up a little like window and go transfer all that to you. Yeah. To yeah. you have because software. if they don't have a station, they have to yeah. either put in all of that information. Well, we collect all that information for <laughs> yes. this medical uh, clients that I have. Even their, um, you know, not social security now. Yeah. Like yeah. All their personal and identifiable yeah. so we don't have to be in compliance with that. Oh, okay. The okay. only time is if they're going to tell you about their health, about their conditions, about their health, and that status, what prescriptions they're taking. You know, if that's something you want them to put on, or you want them to fill out, you know, prior to them coming to the office, you know, you would need to be taken into compliance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And it's just a lot of security, that's all. Yeah. So no one can have it. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes, yes. You mentioned a few parts of the social topic. No, I already commented on the board from our Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Do you have to have the BSP? Yeah. Okay. You just put it on your regular. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, when you're starting out, it's gonna work fine for you. Okay. But if you're looking, if you if you find that your page is slow, because too many people are coming on. Not coming on. Are you sure? Yeah. Most people out of the gate when they start their business, they think about fifty bucks a month. I'm sorry. I'm all very expensive. And I agree with you. It is when you're starting out. Take that ten dollar a month plan for right now, but we get with the company. I think that there's a path to upgrade. Okay, so you're saying you still do have to have a VPS. A VPS. VPS. Yeah, it's um almost like your regular hosting shared. <coughs> so you have to have a hosting plan. Whether you're in an apartment, probably. It's not a house. a house. a a a house. a <laughs> yeah. It's just where your website lives. And I can go to other people's houses on my. Right, right. Because they have to like a house. Or a car. I can't remember the name of the house. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. There's no like emotion. Why do you use an emotion? Because I am corporate. I, um, in the free SSL, which I do a lot of e-commerce, but also, I can go from $7 a month, you know, $300 as I can scale my business. Because I've been in a lot of websites, so I can scale my business. SiteGround and Flywheel do like 20 or 30 bucks a month. But on Motion Hosting, I can get on there for like, I think it's 19 bucks a month on the website. But that's shared. Now, I did four of those accounts and realized a couple of years ago, so I'm spending too much time trying to get on the 
skinny down on the phone. Launching those pictures. Once I went to BTS, I was like, I'm sitting here. I spent an entire Saturday in my small five sizes. And then there's like three questions. You're like, 30 minutes and you said, and there's the commerce. It's got a blood level. You cannot play. You can walk away and not actually